<clears throat> so I thought we'd have a look at Canon. Now, Canon did a really smart thing. With the introduction of autofocus, they redesigned their lens mount completely to accommodate this, producing the EF mount. Now the EF mount has lived on for years. It's still out there. There's millions of EF lenses and lots of EF mounts. And even on, you know, black magic cameras, on, on all sorts of film and video cameras, you can get an EF mount. And basically the entire system was built around a thing called EOS, which is electrical optical system. And so they envisaged the future was very much autofocused and electronically controlled. And Canon just went for it. So I can't remember the year, 1987, I think they released a camera, they released a camera called the, the Canon 650, which was their first EOS camera um, with the EF mount. And they started to bring out the new lenses. Now the thing about the EF mount is basically the motor that drives the autofocus is inside the lens. Um, a lot of other manufacturers sort of went like Nikon and Pentax went down the road of, of sort of keeping the motor for the uh, autofocus inside the camera and then using a screw adapter to sort of drive the lens to autofocus. Canon just went, went for it, totally went for it and decided to redesign the mount. And they also did something really clever as well. Because of the flange distance, which is the so the distance between the back of the lens and the film plane. It's very, very short. It's 44 millimeters, I think, on EF. So what you can do on an EF mount is you can mount Nikon lenses, you can mount contact lenses, you can mount Olympus lenses, and Nikon contact. Yeah, so you can mount other lenses onto EF mounts. Now, you can see a lot of that today, where you've got you know, EF mount video cameras, uh, black magics, things like that, where people have adapted older lenses like contact Zeiss lenses onto black magic cameras. So the EF mount is hugely popular and it's brilliant. It's been replaced, not replaced, but it's being pushed out now by their by their new EOS arm, their new arm mount, uh, which is uh, for mirrorless cameras. But I'm, I'm sure EF will be around for years to come. I mean, there are some tremendous lenses. Anyway, so the camera I'm going to look at is the camera that replaced the EOS 650, which was their first one, and it's the EOS 100, which is this thing. Now, these aren't hugely popular cameras. I actually bought six of these for a pound on eBay, and it cost me six quid shipping. Um, basically, they were replaced, I think, a couple of years later by an, an, a, another version. But it's, they're really interesting cameras. And I only got them because they were super cheap, and I, I've got a lot of EF lenses. So I've got a couple of um, Canon, ca Canon film cameras to shoot with. Now, there's one thing about this, which is, which is um, I really, really like. And if you're into street photography or, or taking stealth photography, the worst thing you can do is press a shutter button on one of these cameras and you hit a massive rewind. What they did with this, very cleverly, they redesigned the, the film winding system. And I think it's like a strip of some nylon or, or material but they don't use it like normally you can hear it's one of the most silent cameras on the planet you can hear the shutter but listen to the rewind and i'll see if it focuses of course you can barely hear it it's so so quiet and it's you know it's a, it's an absolute stealth camera it comes with all the standard sort of um things that we've got used to by now i think it's 91 this came out where you've got like you know program tv all that but then you start to see those those modes creep in like sports mode and all this kind of stuff, which is like a, a higher end program mode. But it's an incredibly capable camera, this. I mean, I think they used to teach with these a lot of colleges and universities, photography. Um, it's got, you know, everything you basically need. It's got a built-in flash, can get it out. It has got a built-in flash, if I can release it. AF drive, my flash not gonna come up. And maybe it has to pop up with power. Okay, yes pops up with power. Now, on this one, I've got a Sigma 24mm Super Wide 2. Now, this is probably the cheapest camera setup I own because if you work, I've got six of these for one pound. So this must be like, I don't know, 20 pence worth of camera here. And then the lens, the Sigma Wide 2 24, is 2.8. 
I picked up for Actena because some of the older segments that over the years uh, Canon changed their TT8, it was called ATL, which is the metering system they used for flash. And they switched to uh, another one, I can't remember which it was, ETTL. And because of this change, some of these older lenses that came out, the original third parties that came out for Canons, just don't work. So I found this one on eBay, and if you look for these, it'll say that it doesn't work on a digital camera. Because what it does, you put it on any, uh, like, old, uh, newer, newer Canon, even some of the newer Canon film cameras I've got, it literally locks the lens up, throws a wobbly, doesn't work. Because there's a chip in here, which is basically designed for the ATL, I believe, the ATL version. So it's a way that they transmit distance, distance and focus for flash. But anyway, so you could get, if you find these older ones, the, the oldest third party lenses, you can, you can get them really cheap because they don't work on digital cameras because of that chip that's in them. So this was like a tenner and the camera was like 30p. And it's an amazing lens as well. The Sigma's, the Sigma multi-wide, you know, Sigma wide lenses were really, really capable lenses. And it just never comes off this. If I try and put it on my newer Canon cameras, uh, it just won't play. And because they've lost the aperture ring on this, he says, you can't, you can't put it on a manual camera. Um, you, or you can't really use it on anything really, because it doesn't have an aperture ring. So, but yeah, but it's a great lens for this setup. Anyway, so that's the Canon EOS 100. Um, we'll go through and have a look at it on the table and, and then I'll come back. Okay, so here we are, the Canon EOS 100. As you can see, it's like basically like set up quite normally. Obviously, we've got an LCD display over here. You've got a control dial over here, which gives you um, all your major functions. You've got uh, program mode, TV, AV, aperture priority, manual, then you've got all your sort of sports modes and all sorts of stuff, and a green mode, which is like autopilot. And then you've got L, which is the off position, so it's locked. So I'll put it into program mode, push down the dial on the top, and then I'll take the cap, and then you're good to go. And if you look over on the right-hand side here, you've got all the information that you need in the display. I've got 19 frames left, I've got one shot mode, so I've not like continuous, um, uh, what's it called? Continuous, what's the word? Continuous wind on. CF means there's a function, I've set a function. Um, exposure, compensation here, battery level, and then you've got the different mode that I've got for um, uh, exposure there. So hang on, let me just, there we go. So if I hit the button, we've got, I'm at 350. F 9.5, it's done in program mode. So yeah, you've got the flash part here, which you press the button, it comes up when it thinks it needs flash. And you've got, obviously that's flash compensation. So on the back, I mean, I'm gonna go through, actually I'll show you some of these different program mode. So we're in program mode now, it's not doing anything. If I go to AV, if I roll that dial, now I'm controlling the aperture. TV, now I'm controlling the shutter. P, back to that. Servo, it changes your F mode. So that's like, like press S. One shot is like press and lock. Servo, if you press it in, means that it's gonna continually do autofocus. Drive mode, if we hit that, that's like multiple frames. Timer, so like that's, hang on, let's just do it. So one, one shot, if I press that, if I hold it down, it'll carry on. I've just shot a couple of rolls there. And then that one, if I press it down again for timer, is it gonna do it? It should do a timed photo. It may not, I've not used that one before. It has, there you go. So that's just fired off a time shot. So now you've got this mode, the green mode over here. This is some auto everything. Um, it's like your safety mode. You've got some other interesting features on there. I've never used that one, whatever that one is there. Um, but yeah, for me, I mean, mainly it's like, I keep this in program mode and just shoot with it. And as you can hear from it clicking away there, it's like super silent. So let's have a look on the back, but I'll leave it on. If you flip that one, the little 
thing on the side and then roll the wheel. If you watch the top, hang on. You see it's changing, we just hit it. You see my ex exposure compensation is changing on the wheel. Let's put that back to zero. And lock it again. So that's my exposure compensation dial. On the front here, great big eye. I've got a number on here because I had six of them, didn't I? So I'm there, not much to do. You've got release, just to get your lens off. And then you've got here on the lens is AF or MF, if you want to do that. But yeah, so there's not much to it. You get the film in, there's the film release. I'm not going to do it, there's the film in it. And then it takes these batteries, which is those C, oh, two CRM5M. Yeah, I mean, as I said, I mean, this was like a super cheap camera. It was less than a pound, six for a pound. Um, but it can do everything. So yeah, there you go. That's the Canon EOS 100. And that's that Sigma lens. Yeah, great, super wide. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, Canon EOS 100, you can get these cheapest chips. These, that's so cheap. Uh, but they're great, really capable film cameras. They use them in schools and colleges to train people to do photography. You can do everything on it. You can basically, you know, all sorts. It's got some custom functions. There are a few problems when they get sticky. The foam deteriorates on the inside. Yeah, the foam deteriorates at the bottom. It gets sticky shots, but it's really easy if you Google it. There's really easy ways to clean them and get them back in action. But I mean, for like a first film camera, um, you just want to take you know, well exposed, in focus, um, film photographs, because let's face it, film's not cheap. You know, this is just great. It really is. I mean, I, I use this. It's great for stealth photography. It's got really quick autofocus as well for an old camera like this. It's really, uh, hang on, really quick. It's easily as quick as some of my, uh, as of my, like my, my Pentax K1 or some of the digital cameras I've owned in the past. So it's got super quick autofocus. And yeah, it's um, it's really cool, really cheap, especially if you can get the lens. So look out for it, it's like non-work. What you're looking for is a Sigma Super Wide 24, non-working. And if you Google it enough, you work, you can see why. So it normally comes up as non-working on digital. And so everybody thinks there's something wrong with it, but it's not. It's just not been, had the upgrade chip on it. I don't know if there's any others, but I know the Sigma's had problems with the chip. Anyway, get one. Super cheap, enjoy it, and yeah, I, I gave the other five of mine away uh, to people who, who I think needed to shoot film instead of the digital, they needed a break, so I gave those away, so it's my last one. Anyway, okay, thanks for watching.